And then the next book was Our Darkest Night. So we come off of this great reading high and then we get to this book, which I'm not super excited to pick out because when I go to Half Price Books and I see it, it is in the regular fiction section. So I'm kind of hesitant about that. So the reason that I picked this book up is because on Instagram, Robson Reads started a book club and I had enjoyed some of the books that she was reading. She is a Christian mom and so I felt like I could trust her and I was really excited for this reading club. So I went and picked this up and I was like, okay, I'm gonna read it. Pretty disappointed even from the beginning after reading the Elizabeth Musser and just how great writing that was. Um, the writing right off the bat in this is pretty terrible. There is so much description that it's ridiculous. Like you you don't even, it, it's so stereotypical and just tons of description over the top. That was horrible right off the bat. This book reminded me that I don't read modern fiction and I should not read it because you can't trust it and it's probably going to be terrible. The hero was literally the stereotypical perfect man. I wish I could find the part in here where he's introduced. 12 seconds later. Okay, here, so here's a description of the hero. He was fair with a day old beard, the color of dark honey, and a tracing of freckles across his nose and cheekbones. He stood at least a head taller than her father, with shoulders that strained at the faded seams of a much mended coat. But his voice, from the little he'd said to her, was that of an educated man, and there was a reassuring gentleness to his manner. So basically, everything about him is just, what's the stereotypical guy that someone would like? Okay, let's stick him in there. I saw some other reviews talking about how all the characters, basically, they don't have any flaws. They're, like, perfect characters, and it's really weird. Um, basically, the story is, in 1943, they live in Italy, and she's a Jew, and she has to figure out a way to stay safe, so she gets married to a Catholic. Actually, they're not even really married. They're just pretending to be married to protect her and lying to her entire family in the whole town saying that they met a long time ago and they just couldn't wait to get married blah 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 so it's all a lie they're lying to everyone and she ends up getting pregnant they fall in love but there's not really this like great friendship that their relationship comes from it just kind of is like oh look we like each other and it's all based on attraction so very worldly and you get about halfway through the book and there is bad language in here I actually blacked it out so that if I sell it back, at least it'll be slightly cleaner. I was very shocked by that. Uh, a lot of bad words. Obviously, I don't read books that have bad words in it. So that was shocking to me that a Christian would pick out this book to read. And one of the saddest thing about it is just how they're going through this horrible war. She could be taken away into concentration camps. They actually end up being taken to concentration camps. And there's no hope. Like, the only hope that they have is tomorrow it might be better. Like, we just have to get through it by just our courage and get to the other side. Even though Jews and Catholics are not Christians, I feel like they still should have some kind of religion that they should look to. But it was just so worldly and there's just no hope and we're just going to have to get to the other side and just trust in ourselves so it was very sad to read because you know that the only true hope is in Christ. And if they were actually Christians in this book, it would have been a totally different story, right? They would have been trusting in God's plans and his sovereignty. And so that was just really depressing to me. I thought the story was really boring. Nothing really happens. And except for like a few big moments and then everything else is totally boring. So would not recommend this book. Please don't read it. Please forget I even ever read it. And then the last book I read last month was York. This one took me a little bit longer to get through. It is a YA read. And I saw uh, Chantel Reads all day. She reviewed this book. So I bought it last month and um, was excited to read it because it looked like something I would enjoy sort of like The Lost Property Office or Lemony Snicket series of unfortunate events. Really liked those books. Kind of a clue following this mystery, but was very disappointed about this book. It's a very hard book to read. It is almost 500 pages and very, very slow. I'm actually reading the sequel right now. Please don't, don't ask me why I'm doing that. Um, I just feel like I should. And still nothing is really happening. You know, normally you read one of these books and it's fast paced. It's basically all in one day, like the Mysterious Benedict Society. They're just figuring it out rapid fire and you're so invested in the story. This is so boring. There are so many extra things that shouldn't be in there. Like the actual storyline is maybe like 45 pages. That would be really interesting. 
but everything else is super boring and doesn't give to the story at all. It had a good premise, right? Steampunk, New York, and these people leave a cipher hidden throughout the city in all these different buildings, these different machines. That's a cool idea, I feel like. And then you move to modern day and there's these children trying to figure out the cipher and what is going on and save their apartment building that is going to be torn down. So what's wrong with this book? Well, Glad you asked. Let's start with just the technicalities. There are so many typos and I cannot stand books with typos because it's so easy to just have someone read it, read it yourself, read it out loud and find the typos in it. Like anyone who's been in the English class knows that. And this is not just like, oh, okay, she missed one typo on one page, whatever, I can look over it. This is every page has a typo. Um, whole words are just left out. Like sentences that don't even make sense. Sentences that actually say the opposite of what she means. Like it would leave out not or something. It's so bad. And then the writing is subpar. Almost every sentence has some kind of rub run on. Like she doesn't know how to use the word and. The story, one sixteenth of it was good. The world idea, imaginative, like I already said, but very undeveloped. Do you think you're getting in here to read about this really cool steampunk machines world? But she hardly talks about that at all. But what she does really like to talk about is all these random characters with all of this social justice topics and it doesn't change in the second book. There's literally whole pages where she just goes on to this random digression that has nothing to do with the storyline and she talks about um, how Europeans were so horrible to come over to America and kick the Native Americans out of their land or the only character description she ever gives is based off of the color of their skin or the texture of their hair. And she wants to mention over and over again this, the one character's dreadlocks. She has this fascination with social justice and this is why I don't read modern books because this is what kids are reading these days. I mean, this is for children to read and it's so just indoctrination. So would not recommend this book. I think I gave it two stars, which is a little better than Our Darkest Night. But still, it was just like for the idea and the creativity. And I did not really enjoy reading it overall. I don't really know why I'm reading the second one. Maybe just to waste my time. So the this last month started out pretty well. I had like four four-star books in a row. Then ended not the greatest. August is already well underway and I've already finished two books. So it is looking a little better, although I'm reading York number two. So yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm sorry I had to give such scathing reviews of a few books, but really the purpose of this channel is to be able to give you information on whether you should read books or not. And there truly are books out there that are terrible. And um, I know that modern fiction is pretty terrible, but sometimes I just want to give it a try every once in a while to see if there's anything redeeming in it. And there really isn't. So if you're looking for something to spend your time on, well and actually learn something and even be pointed to the gospel and to Christ because that can happen in a fiction book. I would just really recommend you don't go pick up uh, some modern fiction book. Go look on Goodreads, look in the one star reviews or the two star reviews and you'll get a good idea of what is wrong with the book and why you maybe shouldn't read it. Of course you can still make the choice to read it like some of these books I'm still reading so it's not necessarily wrong to read those books especially if you don't know going into it. Um, editor Haley here just to say that there are some modern fiction books that can be good. I'm not totally discounting all modern fiction books. I've read some just in the last year, like um, the last bookshop in London. Really love that. Some of the Rudolph Stipitas books. So I guess I wasn't clear enough. There are some good modern fiction books, but it's very rare. And I think we have to be a lot more cautious than we would be with a classic. We can pretty much trust it, pick it up. It's going to be great and it's going to be worth our time. But a lot of the modern stuff that's written, we just have to really dig deep to find those reviews. So that's what I was meaning here. I wasn't saying that everything that's written in modern times is bad, but it's just a lot less likely for it to be good. And I definitely won't be going and picking up books off the shelf without checking um, the one star reviews just to tell if it's yeah, good. Or there was a lot of disappointing things in those books, but I'm excited to a new month and a stack of books that I think is going to be way better than last month's. 
I hope you enjoyed this video that is super long, so I might split it into two videos. Let me know in the comments down below what books you read last month, what was your favorite, did you have any five-star reads, and as always, the links to all these books that I mentioned will be in the description below, so you can go check them out and buy them for yourself. I will see you guys next week. Bye!